So coming to rheumatoid arthritis, we all know that it's a systemic disorder affecting many of the systems like skin, eyes, lungs, blood vessels, joints and it has very bad and unpredictable course and prognosis. Uh, I will not go much through the pathophysiology of this rheumatoid arthritis as already we are a bit late. So can you start the video please? Pathologic hallmarks of rheumatoid arthritis include inflammation of the joints, particularly the small joints in the hands, wrists and feet, accompanied by cartilage destruction and bone erosion. Underlying inflammation leads to many of the characteristic signs and symptoms of RA, such as pain and swelling of the joints. Inflammation results from abnormal propagation and activation of many types of immune cells, resulting in the secretion of cytokines and other mediators that sustain and amplify the inflammatory environment. As a key pro-inflammatory cytokine, TNF-alpha, along with other cytokines, activate immune cells, including macrophages, as well as other cells, such as synovial fibroblasts. In a key step, activated macrophages and synovial fibroblasts release pro-inflammatory cytokines, including TNF-alpha, IL-1 and IL-6, and mediators of vascular growth, including VEGF. VEGF is essential to the process of blood vessel proliferation, or angiogenesis, which facilitates an influx of activated cells. These cells contribute to the growth of panis and sustain the inflammatory cycle. The growing, vascularized panis develops villus projections that result in better access to the cartilage and bone and therefore greater opportunity for the activated cells to release damaging inflammatory mediators and enzymes. In the interface between panis and cartilage, Activated synovial fibroblasts and macrophages are a source of enzymes that degrade the cartilage matrix. These include MMPs or matrix metalloproteinases. Thus, activated cells in panis are key instigators of cartilage destruction. Chondrocytes are the main cellular component of cartilage and normally produce the extracellular matrix. However, in response to stimulation by TNF-alpha, IL-1 and other inflammatory mediators, chondrocytes become activated in the rheumatoid joint. Activated chondrocytes secrete more inflammatory factors and more metalloproteinases, MMPs, which aggravates inflammation and cartilage damage. The cumulative result is irreversible cartilage damage and joint space narrowing. Under normal conditions, bone remodeling involves a tightly regulated balance between bone resorption and bone formation. However, excessive TNF-alpha helps stimulate osteoclastogenesis and bone destruction. In the marrow, TNF-alpha helps stimulate monocyte differentiation into osteoclast precursors. At inflamed joints, in the presence of macrophage colony stimulating factor TNF-alpha and rank ligand, osteoclast precursors differentiate into mature osteoclasts, resulting in bone resorption. Thus, the direct and indirect effects of the TNF-alpha on osteoclast maturation and activation culminate in focal bone erosions and irreversible joint damage. Okay, so I think this video has made my life easy. So it works in the same way in the osteoarthritis also. Uh, the pathology is the same with more and more inflammation and leading to synovitis, destruction of the articular cartilage. So, all the anti-inflammatory products, they are uh, released and they are guided by the nuclear factor Kappa B, that is NF Kappa B, which is the main key role, working as a key role in this activation of all the anti-inflammatory cytokines and this has an essential role in inflammation and immune responses. So, it acts as a master switch to turn the inflammation on and off once it gets stimulated. 
so what happens with the activation of nf kappa b it leads to infl inflammatory uh, rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis like ankylosing spondylosis psoriatic arthritis as well as juvenile rheumatoid arthritis so this is the master switch of inflammation leading to many disorders so it's the same slides with how it activated so inflammatory stimuli it leads to inactive nf kappa b to active nf kappa b leads to translocation into the nucleus leads to activation of the genes including the inflammatory mediators and a release of inflammatory mediators once these are released it damages the synovial membrane as well as the chondrocytes as well as the bone which we have seen in the video so it plays a crucial role in inflammation and the immune response through the regulation of the gene encoding with the pro inflammatory cytokines and the inducible enzymes so this is a innovative option for this management that is a nf kappa b inhibitor so we basically stop the inflammation inflammation process at the basic level so is the molecule is curcumin it's a biologically active uh, compound which possesses many properties like anti inflammatory as well as antioxidant anti proliferative and anti angiogenic so it has been studied of more than 65 trials has been done on more than 1000 patients which has which is already completed and still the 35 trials these are going on so how it acts so it acts as multiple sites like it prevents the activation of nf kappa b which is the most important switch to start the inflammation and thus it prevents its translocation into the nucleus and prevents the release of inflammatory mediator so here it stops uh, it doesn't starts the inflammatory process so how the role in rheumatoid arthritis as well as osteoarthritis it has been compared with the diclofenac and it it is confirmed that it has a uh, same effect as uh, same effect and safe in the patients with rheumatoid arthritis active form of rheumatoid arthritis it is also effective and well tolerated we all know the side effect of diclofenac as a uh, uh, gi intolerance so compared to the diclofenac this curcumin is well tolerated gi tolerability is much more better uh, again it relieves the pain and reduces the need for nsaid in osteoarthritis so again it reduces the side effect of all the nsaids can be used with the ibuprofen can be compared with the ibuprofen with the same significant decrease in the pain stiffness and functional score it can be used as a monotherapy also many of the patients has been shown a good result with a monotherapy and very safe till 8 months so the trial has been done maximum up to 8 months till date and it is also effective and safe for long term management it can be combined with diclofenac also maybe in very severe cases of arthritis and it it is used uh, and it has been uh, shown that it is benefited in co in combination with nsaid along with it can be used along with the celecoxib also it can be used along with the steroids which acts in a synergistic way it can be used with the dmrds like methotrexate so it reduces the dose of all these dmrds and reduces the commonest side effect like hepatotoxicity and hematoxicity so unlike other nsaids steroids and dmrds it is well tolerated and have a less side effects so there are some limitations to curcumin it's a poorly water soluble which is the most important problem so all these cadela people they have make it uh, made it less or more bioavailable and the clinical trials has been done the dose which was required earlier was 12 grams per day 
and with this technology that is self micro emulsifying drug delivery system which has been developed the dose has been quite reduced and it helps to increase the bioavailability of the drug so here you can see it ensures this uh, ensures a higher bioavailability the exact dose may vary from patient to patient depend upon the severity the degree of inflammation and the response of the patient so many of the patients with more mild to moderate inflammation their response to 100 to 200 mg rather than 12 grams per day and if there is severe inflammation then we can go safely up to 400 mg per day so in summary how it works it inhibits the master switch that is the nf kappa b and thus reduces the release of inflammatory prostaglandins cytokines it can be used as a monotherapy which seems to be effective and safe in the treatment of arthritis effectivity if, by efficacy it's at par with NSAIDs with lesser side effects can be used with NSAIDs or steroids as an additive or synergistic action in severe forms and it can reduce the dis, dose of NSAIDs as well as steroids and can be used with methotrexate which again reduce the dose of methotrexate to reduce the toxicity and it can be given orally and safe and well tolerated compared to the biologics so it's an attractive option in management of this arthritis either a monotherapy or combination depend upon the severity and particularly useful when the patients are not tolerating the NSAIDs or the steroids or the DMRDs or the patients with a comprom compromised renal function or hepatic dysfunctions so thank you.